Lawrence Okoli knocks out Christoph Glowacki in the sixth round to capture the vacant WBO World Cruiserweight title in his 16th fight. Now, I think most of us will feel that this was by far and away Lawrence Okoli's best performance to date. I saw a lot of improvements in there. Lawrence Okoli has been criticized over the years for holding too much on the inside. In this fight, we saw very little of that. I saw big improvements under Barry Robinson prior to him hooking up with Shane McGuigan and the improvements have only increased. His stance is different now. If you compare it to how he used to fight early on in his career, now with Shane McGuigan, he tends to keep, keep this left hand down. And I've mentioned before, there are many advantages to keeping a left hand down if you're a tall fighter. One of the advantages is the opponent often doesn't see the jab. Okay, that's one advantage. Also, because they don't see the jab, it's coming from outside of their peripheral vision, it makes them hesitant. And it also splits their uh, attention from watching out for the right hand but also watching out for this. It also helps to create distance. When you've got your arm up here, rather than down here, the tendency is you, you, you don't feel like you're keeping the guy as, uh, uh, you know, out there as much. When you've got your arm down here, it's more like an antenna. You know, you can gauge the distance better. I always found this when I was fighting and sparring. If I kept, kept my left hand down, particularly against shorter guys, I'll be able to gauge the distance better rather than when I've got my hand up here, which is how... Lawrence Okoli used to fight early on in his career. So there was lots of improvements here. His footwork was excellent. He was controlling the action. He was keeping Christoph Glowacki in place with the jab. And at times when they did get up close, Lawrence Okoli would throw a couple shots, then he would spin off to the side. And I, I know that must be something he's been working on with Shane McGuigan. So those of us who picked Lawrence Okoli to win, like myself, I'm not sure how many expected it to be this dominant. I mean, it really was all Lawrence Okoli in there. I said in my pre-fight video that I could see Okoli maybe winning by stoppage. You know, not super early, but maybe mid-rounds. But I didn't think he would just totally dominate to this extent. I thought the Glowacki would have a bit more success, given all his experience and what have you. Although I was fairly confident Lawrence would win, because if you look, and this is taking nothing away from Lawrence Okoli, by the way, it was a fantastic performance. But my last memory of Christoph Glowacki was seeing him wobbling all over the ring against Maris Breedis. And was that his last fight? Let me just double check here. Yeah, that was his last fight. He was wobbling all over the ring in that fight. And I know it was very contentious and what have you, but he was in a bad way. And that was my last memory of him. And of course, he was dropped by Marco Hook as well. When he won world title for the first time, he also fought Alexander Usek. So he's been around the block. But I just felt like someone like Lawrence Okoli, who is younger, fresher, and very physically strong. I think people really underestimate the significance of Lawrence Okoli's physical strength. Because as we saw early on in his career, when he fought people like Isaac Chamberlain, even if he's not as technically good as the opponent, because he has this physical strength and punching power, he can nullify a lot of that. Now, it wasn't pretty with Chamberlain and Askin and people like that, but he has that to fall back on if he's not able to overcome somebody technically. But in this instance with Christoph, and that's why I, I felt like he would win the fight because, again, if it did start to get a little difficult from a technical point of view against Glowacki. He could just impose his size on him, impose his physical strength and do it that way. I always felt like Okoli would be the physically stronger man here because of what I've seen before in his career and because of the fact he's always sparring these big guys. You know, the AJs and the uh, Tyson Furies, Dylan Whites, all those kind of guys. He's used to sparring big men. He's used to the body contact and what it's like wrestling, wrestling around with big heavyweights. So a guy like Christoph Glowacki, he's not going to have the same strength as the people that Lawrence Okoli's used to being in the ring with. So, yeah, 
excellent performance, controlled things with the jab, very poised, very confident. You know, there was no serious nervousness or anything there. He was just very, very sure of himself. And, you know, one of the things about Lawrence O'Colley, I like his story because it's not the typical, oh, boxing saved me from a life of crime. I was running around in the streets. I used to be a tough guy. No, I like his story because he used to work at McDonald's in Victoria Station. And he was listening or watching Anthony Joshua in the Olympics and that inspired him. That is something more relatable to most people rather than running around in the streets and all this kind of business. You know, that's something we've heard a zillion times over, right? Even from me. <laughs> so we don't need to hear any more of them kind of story. Well, look, people's stories are people's stories. But just from the perspective of the general public, Lawrence O'Colley's story is more relatable, you know, working in McDonald's and, and what have you. And now he's a world champion in his 16th professional fight. So yeah, fantastic performance, really didn't put a foot wrong. Excellent work by him and Shane McGuigan. And on to bigger and better things. He's talking about Maris Breedis. Now Maris Breedis is a very good fighter, of course. But I didn't actually realize how old he is. Maris Breedis is now 36 years of age. And he turns 37. Where's his date of birth? Okay, it doesn't, okay, no, debut. Doesn't have his date of birth here. Uh, but I have been told, I don't know if this is true, that if he fights Okoli later on this year, he's likely to be 37 by the time that fight takes place. So yeah, he's no spring chicken. So the instant reaction from a lot of people when they hear Lawrence Okoli talking about fighting Meris Breedis, they're saying, ah, it's too early. Breedis is the next level. I think even Breedis' promoter, Sowland, has come out and said, hey, you know, pump the brakes. This is a whole new level, but if you want to fight, let's do it. But when you consider the age, you know, I know Meris Breedis keeps himself in fantastic condition, but Father Time is undefeated. Lawrence O'Colley, significantly younger, something like seven or eight years younger. Very physically strong. I know Meris Breedis is physically strong too, but O'Colley has got that reach, you know? In fact, what is Lawrence O'Colley's reach? Does it say here? We know he's six foot five inches tall. I don't know what his reach is, but it's definitely longer than Maris's Breedis' reach. <laughs> so I think that that's a very interesting fight. And if Lawrence O'Colley and his trainer, Shane McGuigan, feel like he's ready, then why not? He's world champion now. And as I've said for the longest time, if you hold a world title belt, you should be willing to fight anybody in the division, irrespective of how many fights you've had. See, I was very critical of people like Tank Davis. Remember when he first became a world champion and they kept him away from Vasyl Lomachenko? Yeah, I don't believe in that. I believe if you're going to call yourself world champion, then you should be willing to face anybody. And Lawrence Okoli is. And this is the way he's moved throughout his career. Very early on, he was fighting journeyman, but he wanted to get a move on. He wanted proper fights, meaningful fights. And he fought his domestic rivals in Isaac Chamberlain, dominated that fight, Luke Watkins, Matt Yaskin. So he cleaned up at domestic level. Later on, he fought Wadi Camacho. So at every turn, every step of the way, Lawrence O'Colley has wanted to fight the best guys. He's wanted to move at a good pace. You know, moved on from them, was talking about the Lebedev fight, but Lebedev, I'm not sure what happened in his career. Uh, well, I know he's retired now, but it was a uh, on and off, on and off situation with Akali. He then got the opportunity against Christoph Glavatsky and is that how you pronounce it? Glavatsky? <laughs> Glavatsky, forgive me, folks. I, I struggle with these Eastern European names. Much better when pronouncing African names. So Lawrence Akali goes on to bigger and better things. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And yes, I did see uh, Lawrence Akali calling out, is that what you want to call it? Or, or acknowledging Dwyer in his post-fight interview on Sky. It was pretty funny. As far as I'm aware, Dwyer hasn't seen it yet. He doesn't seem to be aware that Lawrence Okoli <laughs> mentioned him in that interview. I did laugh uh, when I saw it. And, you know, I've spoken to Lawrence Okoli a couple times and he is somebody who accepts constructive criticism, not haters and all these kind of people. When someone is being objective and, you know, criticizing him in a constructive fashion, 
he takes that on board. You know, a lot of fighters, look, fighters are egotistical. We all have an ego. In order to become the best at boxing, you have to have an ego. But he isn't so egotistical that he can't take constructive criticism because he wants to improve. Whereas a lot of other fighters, if you criticize anything that they do, they get really angry, they get really emotional, they don't want to talk to you, and so on. Lawrence O'Colley's not like that. Yeah, that's what I could tell you from first-hand experience when I've spoken to him online before. He's, uh, you know, a, a realistic-minded individual. So, yeah, hats off to him. Great performance. Him and Shane McGuigan should be very, very happy with themselves and proud of that performance. And I know Shane McGuigan has had a rough time of it over the past couple of years, losing some prominent fighters, Carl Frampton, of course, uh, Josh Taylor. And there's been some, you know, acrimony there. But with Lawrence O'Colley, he might have found potentially the or one of the best fighters he's worked with so far. I know he worked with David Hay, but that was towards the end of David Hay's career. And it remains to be seen whether Lawrence O'Colley can reach the heights of a Carl Frampton. But I think he's got the potential there, certainly at cruiserweight. At heavyweight, I know it's a different ball game, and he's a, certainly going to move up to that weight because of his size, his strength. Um, but a cruiserweight... This guy could go on to be a very, very good cruiserweight champion indeed. And if he can unify the belts, the, 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 the kind of confidence he has at the moment, the kind of momentum, I wouldn't be surprised if he managed to unify the belts, become undisputed cruiserweight champion, then move up to heavyweight. So he is a bit of a sleeper, Lawrence O'Colley, because not, not a lot of people, especially early on in his career, really felt like he was going to go anywhere. But what I recognized early on was the self-belief, constantly wanting to push himself, constantly wanting to improve, willing to take criticism in order to improve, you know, constructive criticism, not the haters and all these idiots, but, but constructive stuff. So, and, and of course the physical strength, yeah, the punching power, all that kind of business. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Lawrence O'Colley's fantastic performance over Christoph Glowacki, defeating him. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below.